are starting Monday with the Mayor, and today it's Monday with the Mayors. Emmett McCracken was my first, the first person I met when we moved to Bluffton yeah. in 1993. He and John joined forces, <laughs> and you sat on the bank advisory board. Yes, I did. Of the second bank in Bluffton. Yes. All of Bluffton. Bluffton Township and the town of Bluffton. Yeah. And we walked through the woods. He was living in Moss Creek with his lovely wife, Teddy, and his mother, who to this day will just be a part of our soul. We called her lovingly McNomi, but her name's Naomi. <laughs> but she was McNomi to me and my kids. So Emmett, we just thought it'd be a great way to start this Monday with the mayor to let you all get to know a little bit about this guy. Um, so we'll just be casual. So Emmett, we moved here in 93. Yes. And you lived in Rose Hill, I mean in Moss Creek. Moss Creek. And um, you were on county council in 1993. 93, yes. What life was like then? Yes. Well, I was there on county council for six years and then uh, was elected mayor and stayed on town council another six years. Yeah. So, and I got out after 12 years of that, I got out before I was run out. <laughs> but I was just sitting here, and it's easy to reflect on a number of things. I think. I am in Bluffton in part because of the oyster. Mm -hmm. If you look just to the right here where that dock is now, there was an oyster factory here. And my grandfather came up in, from Florida in the early 1900s and ran the oyster factory that was there and was destroyed in the hurricane of 1940. But my first, my first resident in Bluffton was the little cottage over there where uh, the Burdens. Emily, where the Burdens lived. Oh, uh, really? So my mother and father stayed there with my grandfather. But it was just a long lead in to the fact that part of the oyster factory was a shell mill mm -hmm. and they would grind the oyster shell and put it on the streets in Bluffton. I grew up in, on Bridge Street and Bridge Street, as long as I can remember, was Oyster Shell. Yeah. And Miss, Miss McNomi, Miss Naomi, had, was an amazing artist. And she had some pencil drawings yeah, of that shell of mill. That, of the shell mill in the Oyster Factory. Yeah. Yeah. Are her drawings still at Four Corners? Where are they, 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 they have are? some, and we have some. We still have some here okay. of hers. Yeah. Okay. Emmett, Emmett, just a little commercial before we get back to the town. They um, they now have this house, but upstairs of where we're sitting was the Stock Farm Antiques. Yes. And that's when we moved here, and it's a dirt road, and there was a curve in the road. Um, no one lived on the dirt road, and it had a sign that says, Yes, it is. Yes, it is, too. Yes, it is, too. <laughs> You, you can figure that one out. We won't tell you because you got to figure, contact Emmett or myself and tell me if you know what that meant. Mm -hmm. So you did the, um, you were on town council, you were elected. How many, not to put you on the spot, what do you think the population was in 99, 98, 99? Of the town? Uh -huh. How oh. many voted for you? Oh my gracious, I can't recall. I remember. I, I remember me on mine. And then, if you just sitting here and going forward a few decades, you look at Palmetto Bluff. Mm -hmm. And I was on I was on county council when Palmetto Bluff began to talk mm -hmm. about development, and they were talking to the county, and I was chairman at that time, and they also were talking to the town, and it really it put me a little bit on. The spot because I had some, you know, you felt some obligation in terms of county interest as chairman. But then this was my hometown. But I remember I was sitting in this very seat and I called Jack Alderman, who was with Brannigan Real Estate, and 
dealing with the county and the town in terms of what Palmetto Bluff was going to look like. And I called him up and I said, Jack, you're going to have to figure out who you're going to take to the down to the dance <laughs> because you're talking to both people. Yeah. And uh, and finally, they they got serious with the town. And I remember writing Mayor Washington at the time and then suggesting that since this is such a massive consequential de decision they're making, why don't we have a referendum? So we had a, Bluffton had a advisory referendum on the annexation of Palmetto Bluff. And I, I, I'm pretty sure that I suggested to him the wording of the referendum also. I can't I think Andy Kennedy was the town attorney at the time. Yes. So anyway, they did that. And uh, but before that, in this ninety in Christmas of ninety three, the county uh, uh, permitted Sun City that's right. And I think right. that, that started a lot of what, I think that was the impetus for a lot of growth in Southern Beaufort County and then later on in, in the town. So that growth could have overwhelmed us and overtaken us, but you left the county and came to the town and um, maybe talk a little bit about the whole reason a town survives and I think that's the comp plan. Had we ever had one before? We, we did. The, the county had finished its comp plan in 98, 99 mm -hmm. or maybe as early as, not as early as 97. It, it, it was a two-year program that the county uh, worked through with the comp plan and then the town was obligated to do one also. If they were going to have zoning, you had to have a comp plan. Mm. So I felt that just ha having been through the comp plan with the county, maybe I could offer something for the town. So I, I ran I ran for mayor in 99. <laughs> and we did, uh, we finished up the comp plan about 2000. That's a, that would be an interesting one to look yeah. at, to go yeah. back and look. Yeah. So jump right, way far. Well, in between all of that, we moved here, right down the street from him. Emmett decided he thought I needed to be on a committee. Now I understand why, because I had little children, and I thought, he think he's crazy. And <laughs> you asked me to, to apply to be on ATAX. Yes. And I got denied, <laughs> and he had to call me, and he had to say, I'm really sorry, but you didn't get the votes. <laughs> so, so I know how it feels when people don't get on committees they want. And I, I poked my lip out and went, well, he asked me. He was the mayor. And, um, Obviously, he, I didn't have much power. You didn't did have a lot of support. <laughs> but you know what? It was Leon Bush who, who got the spot. Yeah. I remember where I was sitting on the front porch yeah. and you called me um, and he left it on his own. He just couldn't find the time and then you called me and said, if you want it. So I yeah. sat with two other people, Judith Hughes, I remember the whole year we had started this accommodations tax yeah. and it was, we spent $1,500 and it wasn't that long ago. So yeah. after that and you were mayor. Um, it was just amazing to see your vision and your love for this town. Palmetto Bluff, the residents at the time must have wanted it. I don't remember yeah. that referendum. I want to find it. But the residents that were here voted to allow what they knew was going to yeah. happen yeah. in Palmetto Bluff. So, um, and what a great gift to our town. It is. It has, it has been. Yeah. So, um, oh, be before oh, I forget, no, uh, congratulations on Municipal Association on the Park. Yes. That was a great picture. But and Miss Wright, you introduced me to her. I yeah. remember her yeah. like it was yesterday. So it wasn't like this hundred years ago kind of family. There was someone living in that house probably up until the last couple of decades. Mercer think, lived in yeah, it. Yeah, Mercer was there. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mercer Pinckney, who's part of that family, 
always thought he was going to get that house. He told me. <laughs> but but I think that the, the, the park there and then the Martin Family Park and other things that the town is doing now is a, is a consequence. You can, you can put it directly back to the efforts in the comp plan. Mm -hmm. Because so. there, there's so many elements of the comp plan that you force people to think through and set goals and objectives and and that's just uh, with great persistence on part of the town and the, and the uh, council I think that's that's one of the results. And you've been part of every one and every revision I think this is our third or fourth revision maybe this is an official update yeah and I remember sitting with you when we had to do a total complete update we had a young man with the town that ran it and I lost his name for a minute but Josh you, Martin Josh was our town man yes Josh yeah. Martin really put his heart and soul in it so people are looking at this and you're going a comp plan government uh, you want to say, I mean, do you want to talk a little bit about the reason we have a comp plan? And well, number one, it, it's state requires state law. If, it, if a municipality or county is going to have zoning, if they're going to institute zoning and land planning, they have to have a comprehensive plan. And it's, um, it's not a very exciting title, but it, when you get into it, it really it goes through the history, it, it, it deals with demographics to show you know, the average age, the um, breakdown, male, female ages, and, uh, which is interesting, I think in Bluffton, what are we about? 37. About 37. We I'd get, like to be 35. But we're getting old. It used to be about 33. You're going to have to bring home a great-grandchild, <laughs> Mr. I'm, I'm not. I'm not helping in He's that not. In that average. But anyway, it's a young population. I but it forces you to look at the current land use and then where, where you want to go as a community in terms of the types of business and and most of all, I think, the protection of the, of the river. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we changed the name this year. I agree with you. I think comp plan and government is like, I, it doesn't excite me. Mm -hmm. So we changed it to Blueprint Bluffton. Oh, okay. So maybe people were listening and listened <clears throat> yeah. to you said, you know, in your own way to yeah. kind of hint that we need to up our stock. But... Mm -hmm. um, this, it's an interesting process. I call it our Bible. And there are different chapters and they all it, they all relate to how our town wants to be. And I think, yeah. and maybe you speak to it, have you noticed that we stick with it and we use it? I, and it translates, I, 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 I think you do stick with it and use it. Because, and it, it translates directly into, you can move directly from the comp plan to land use ordinances and stormwater requirements and parking and transportation and those types of things. So it, it does, uh, it's not something that you do every five or six years and then put on the shelf right. if you do it properly, right. which I think the town has done. I think we really, really try to fill your shoes. Yeah. So you were here in 99 at a council level. We're in 2021. 21. Get greatest. Oh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Be on, and time, time out. When he walks down to speak at public comment, I can see in his eyes if it's gonna be a happy public comment <laughs> or a scolding public comment, and I've gotten both. So be honest. Well, I, I think the town, the town has done, I'm, I'm proud of the town. And, uh, and it's reflected in the, the growth, I mean, people, uh, people want to come here. I mean, it speaks well for, for the town. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes you, when it takes me two minutes to get out from Stock Farm Road onto Highway 46, mm -hmm. I was, 
look at Teddy sometimes and say, God, I wish these people would go home. <laughs> <laughs> and why are they coming down our road? Where yeah. are they going? Where are they going? And you know, all these people, I don't know. Anyway, but it, it's, um, I think the town has done quite well. Well, you have added to the beauty mayor. You, um, you've worn many hats. You've always stayed focused on the heart of our town. And you're not afraid to question, and I like, and I like that. But if you ever had a, a concern, you always had a solution. And that's what I always ask of people. Don't just come and tell us what we're doing wrong, but what can we do about it because we're all human. And um, I'm here because of him. I really mean that because he was such a great, such a great neighbor, but such a great friend. And um, we've watched our kids all grow up together. He's taken on my children like his grandchildren. Um, he has a constant reminder out here of what's important on the river. And then he yeah. gets on the road and he knows what's important. <laughs> um, and we have a Clemson connection also. Um, yes, <laughs> yes. It's always a strong connection. My yeah. dad... And when I moved here, I remember outside you talked to my dad and all of a sudden it was that Southern way. You mm -hmm. went to Clemson, did you know this, that, and all of a sudden there was a connection with um, kind of your dad and my dad in some way. I, I think, yeah, I think they, they knew each other, some yeah. connection, yeah. Yeah, so this is your spot. This might be a three series. We might have to come back. So we talked about comp plan, talked about Palmetto Bluff. Um, this might make it or not, but I do want your thoughts because I'm starting to see now, you know, when things happen, a lot of misinformation gets out. So I'm seeing on the social media, you know, the Palmetto Bluff Marina um, that they're trying to do. That to me was always on in that development agreement, but they were always very respective of, um, following we do not allow any docks on private yeah. property and we still don't but that one conversation about the fueling on the new river and the dry dock storage which is off the river it's a building that houses the boats has kind of gotten around of oh they're allowing docks we've stayed pretty right on track with the development agreement that you signed um not allowing personal docks in a lot yeah. of these areas to keep that you know what we all voted that we wanted to come to the town. Well, they were, are they going down at the south end at Morrow where they want to do mm -hmm. some other things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that is in the news, and it you know it goes back to 1999. That was the first first development yeah. agreement that we we had signed off on. Sometimes we lose um, we lose sight of the fact that well. Excuse me, Oscar Fraser Park is now. There were 640 acres that belonged to Union Bay, a Union Camp, mm -hmm. and that was part of the annexation. So you got what is now Oscar Fraser Park, and um, where the elementary school is. That was part of the of the initial annexation of Palmetto Bluff. Of Palmetto Bluff. Okay, so those annexations, everyone, you know, I'll I'll hear it. Developers <coughs> are just taking over, but there were so many goods off of that. Like you just said, we got land for the school. Yeah. We got land for a park that could have easily been multifamily or yeah. anything else. That's right. Um, jump into Buckwalter. We got land for that whole school complex, and the regional park. Yes. And that's just little yeah. bits of some goods we got, yeah. and and um, you got to relate that to the growth. I think sometimes. Well, you see him walking every day. He walks every day. They he says he retired, but Teddy, his wife, made him get an office. I think your office is outside. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So the little studio that they built for his mother <clears throat> to do her art, um, Emmett's. They're doing something every day so i don't think you're retired um and you want to say me this is it this is all you had to do can we come back absolutely <laughs> we'll interview teddy next time yeah we'll pull her in next time okay cheers